So um, we're going to start the first presentation live stream in just about a minute or so. Um, so my name is David Landau. I've been working on a platform called Opti for about nine months. And the main drive behind Opti is to link together all the world's education and personal growth. Um, a lot of times if we want to learn something, we go to college and it's really expensive, or we try to look for stuff online, and we're not really sure if what we find is really optimal for our goal, if we're spending too much time getting the best content in the world, or just something that's there or available. Um, so I'm proposing to build something which can kind of solve that for a lot of people. Are we ready to stream? Great. So just by a quick show of hands, who's taken an education course or watched just some type of educational material online? Maybe Coursera, Audacity, Khan Academy? Great, so most everybody here. Um, and a lot of it's great, a lot of it's pretty accessible, but we can't always tell every single thing it's gonna cover and how related it is to all the other topics we're studying. Um, so this is a figure from Spock in the first Star Trek remake. And as soon as I saw, saw this, I got completely enthralled because it wasn't 20, 30 students in a classroom learning at the pace of the teacher's preference or the lowest common denominator. It was each person getting a perfectly individualized, customized education updated in real time. So maybe Spock, for example, couldn't see the color green, which is why there's no green up there. Maybe he learned faster than all the other students and it was worth his while to study alone in one of these pods. So while he may not be getting social exposure at that moment, and hopefully he gets it at other times, this is an example of where our future of digital education could go when we have a totally immersive environment, probably VR, something like Oculus. Um, and there's a lot of ways this could run, and I'm kind of proposing one of them. So there's a lot of reasons for this beyond just education could get better. Um, a lot of people have been losing their jobs or concerned about losing their jobs because of the rise of AI and SaaS tools. And the very common counterpoint to this is, oh, well, new technology allows for new fields to be created. Well, 150 years ago, sure, when the cotton loom came out, you could hear about it a year or two before your village got one and learn a new skill before yours became obsolete. Um, but now what we find happening is you have a SaaS tool, and as soon as it's deployed, people all over the world can no longer maintain the relevance of their skills. So a lot of people ask about creative jobs. And there were big layoffs at DreamWorks and Sony recently saying, look, we have Photoshop, we have Dreamweaver, we have all this stuff. We don't need humans to render things a whole lot anymore. And so what we see is we see articles like this coming out more and more frequently, where a lot of people who are very intelligent, very skilled, and very creative, the very set of skills we thought AI wouldn't be able to outpace, becoming obsolete. And I'd like to find a way to help those people become as skilled as possible in whatever they could do next to keep putting food on the table for their families. So there's a lot of other ways to hack our intelligence um, in order to keep up with the rise of different digital tools that people are using like LegalZoom instead of lawyers, WebMD instead of doctor visits if the wait's too long. Um, and there's a lot of ways we could hack this. So you could take certain pills that can make your brain more plastic. Um, this talks about Dinepazil or Depakote, which is a seizure medication that allows you to learn language as fast as when you were four or five. Pretty neat, it's a little bit risky, but it works. Um, and then we see China very recently say, hey, we're making genius babies. And everyone said, oh, we fear this, we think this could happen. When is Gattaca coming? Is Gattaca coming in 20 years and 40 years? Uh, I think Gattaca's here already, so surprise. Um, so one of the nice things about this is for any of us planning to raise a family or planning to genetically engineer ourselves, this technology is spreading and it's getting out there and it's kind of cool. But for those of us who are alive, it's kind of scary. If you or your friend or your child or your cousin is in school trying to compete with somebody who is born literally a genius, how do they keep up? And this is different from, oh, you were born with the right nutrition or the right genetic makeup and you're just naturally gifted as smart. This is your parents paid to make you smarter. And in 30 years, when this is kind of normal from one part of the world, what will happen to the rest of the world that doesn't keep up? So for Western countries that are a little bit more hesitant to do things like this, um, there's a lot of other cool hacks. So the Emotive Insight is really awesome neurotech, which you can just put on your head and ideally control computers through it. I don't know a lot about Emotive, but I'm really excited about it and a lot of different types of neurotechnology technology I've seen. But anybody can use this, including design your babies. Um, you could get brain chips. DARPA's working on something that could be here in five years and restore lost memories, potentially improve the ones we already have. And then Rick Kurzweil, who's a massive proponent of AI, talks about hybrid thinking. 
essentially having nanobots in your brain and a connection to the net where if you're seeing maybe a colleague and you want to impress them with a witty joke, but you can't think quickly enough, maybe you can tap into the cloud's processing power or Amazon Web Services and speed up all the cores of your brain and come up with that joke faster or come up with that reference or that person's name faster than what you otherwise would be able to do. So while this is a neat tool to help us maybe compete with designer babies and evolve our cognition, it's invasive and it's still cutting edge and it's not stuff we can access yet. So I started studying the tools that we have today. How to keep relevant when there are people born with all these amazing superpowers, when a SaaS tool like Salesforce can have an upgrade that can make um, mass amounts of call centers obsolete. And I said, there's a really fragmented market. There's a lot of tools, things to help you read faster, um, things to help you refine your brain in, in different types of ways, like attention, memory, um, and a lot of other stuff that has a ton of content. And I thought, what if we combine this together? What if we help people realize what they need to stay on top and be in the top 5%? And not just study something online, but study absolutely the best for them. And study something across platforms. So if you're a visual spatial learner, you might want things on Coursera. If you think differently, you might want Khan Academy. And out of all the hundreds of providers, why not take the absolute best for each one based on you, your intelligence, your learning style, and your end goal? So instead of going to college and grad school and internships for 12 years to design cars, maybe you could do all that in 1,000 hours for 2,000 bucks instead of eight years of your life or 12 years of your life for a high, high multiple of that. So we're thinking of developing a few different ways. We're thinking of helping people prepare for careers. We're thinking of people helping to grow their soft skills. Um, charisma is a series of learned behaviors. Information processing, like reading things faster. There's a lot of software tools for that. Um, and there's a lot of ways that people can learn language and different physical sports motions just by studying it online. So while we've known these for a while, it hasn't been as customized. So we have some decent progress, and we have a bunch of wireframes, and we have a lot of neat different types of mockups. I'd like to show you a really short video. It's just over a minute. And if something like this were real and you were using it for nutrition or food. Um, so for the live stream, the video is going to start in three, two, one. I want to run a marathon in four months. How should I train? Based on your current health, physiology, and genetics, I recommend Nutrition. Up potassium, sodium, and magnesium by 40%. Double your daily B12 to 400 milligrams and coconut water to 16 ounces. I want to lose 20 pounds for my wedding in two months. What should I do? How much time do you have to exercise each week? Like two hours. My life is crazy. Switch to the low glycemic paleo diet I'm emailing you. Take two minute cold showers every day to boost your metabolism. Stop eating after 6 p.m. and take the four heart-safe, fat-burning supplements just added to your regimen. I love you. Now, now, remain faithful to your fiancé. Just leave me a good tip. So that's kind of corny animation, and that's kind of a funky little cliche example, but it's neat. It's something that knows you. It's something that knows what you want, what you have coming up, and it helps you plan your day. And if you're an adult and you're in a career and you really want to learn that extra skill, maybe data science or marketing analytics, and you can only fit in half an hour a day, maybe $200 a month, and you just can't swing something traditional, great. Like, we have the stuff for that. Why leave it on the users to fish around for something? So we have a few more mock-ups, and we're really excited to be get a little bit further in the building stages of this. Uh, we have a nice home page with a sign-up uh, sheet, and the URL is opti.squarespace.com, which I'll come up later. And as we're building this, I'm looking for people who want to get involved and help in a significant way. Um, as we're building it, we definitely need engineers. Uh, we're raising a solid seed round and then a solid... Anybody who wants to sign up and say, hey, I have this particular personal life goal or job training skill goal, and I'd like to use Opti to help me find a really good cocktail. Um, along with volunteers and, of course, super genius babies, because if they're the best in the world, we want them on our side. So uh, thanks for making the time. That's all I wanted to share for the moment, just to keep this at a quick pace. Um, we have time for about four or five questions. So does anybody have thoughts about this in particular or anything related to any of the topics I brought up? Okay, so you've developed this app, right? 
Or yeah, so this, this is a web app I'm building based okay. on studying a global problem. I think it's fascinating. The one thing I want to say is like, when will it be available for use and does it cost anything? Yeah, the model I plan to use to deploy Opti is we're building the basic version this year. We'll probably deploy it widely to enterprises first and consumers a little bit later in 2016. Um, generally, I'd like to have a model that's free for anybody to use and how we make money is by a portion of the course fees. So if you sign up for Coursera and normally pay 200, we'll probably have some discount code and we'll probably keep a percentage of what you ultimately pay for them. We'll probably also build more advanced features, sorting tools, customization things, surveys, things like that, premium stuff that we'll charge for outside of the free version. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Sure. We have a question in the back. Can you please come up a little bit closer to the front mic? Thanks. And if there's any few further questions um, at each speaker's Q&A, it'd be great if we could just form a slight line out here. That way, the pace of things will be moving pretty quickly. So, hi. Thanks. How do you... Can you Hello? How do you take into account things like brand equity? Like, you know, some people will actually really care that I want to take a MIT computer science course so that when I go for the job, it, it, it will uh, actually give me the value to pay for. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. So there's two main factors there. There's, is the brand better, or are you just more familiar with it and you, and you like it more, even if it's inferior? So the two ways of handling that are, one is presenting each option and showing how effective we think it could be. So if you feel better about Khan Academy than lynda.com, for a certain example, we could say that Lynda will get you there in less time and the quality is rated as, more, as higher and it hits more benchmarks, but have the Khan option available. So one of the things that I obsess about with mass customization is giving choice to the user. So while we can recommend a cocktail, there definitely will be a lot of options to filter it and customize it any way you want. Especially if it's the end of the day, the user will use this program if it covers this versus if it doesn't. Um, that's an important feature. Now, if you have an employer who's thinking of paying for something like this, and we've talked to a lot of enterprise customers, they might say, here's the curriculum, we want people to follow it. Just as if you want to go into executive coaching, there are certain certification programs which are recognized and certain ones that are not. Um, so we always want to provide the best information to each user from all the sources, whether it's a peer-reviewed journal or info from employers. We have time for one or, more, one or two more questions. Great. Well, I'm really glad everybody made the time to come by. Um, I really encourage you to study things in this field. I think that this subject matter is relevant to all of us, regardless of whether or not you want to learn something. The fact that there are going to be people born with intelligences 30 to 60% higher than us in our lifetime is very significant for the global economy. Completely taking AI out of the equation, because that will really affect everything in a pretty significant way. Um, it's really neat, all the tools that are out, um, and consciousness attacking usually focuses on one or more at a time. Um, so the next speaker up is Cheeky, and Cheeky is talking about pr how practicing our skills makes us better at those skills.